I'm here with Pete Haskell. Pete Haskell, this is this is the last week for you here at Roses Marine. <laughs> what year did you start here? 1981 I started here. 19, that makes 32 years. Uh, 34 years. 34 years. Yes. 34, working oh. on my 35th. Working on your 35th year. And uh, for people that don't know, Roses Marine is an iconic part, has been an iconic, a, a part of Gloucester's waterfront. Uh, hey, hey, how you doing, honey? Uh, unlike... I mean, uh, as integral to the fishing industry as any other business that's ever been in this port. Oh, sure. Uh, absolutely, right? Yes. And, yes, and that's right. not and that's not uh, exaggerating oh, not in, the, in the least. No, no. Yeah. When I started working here, there was uh, several fishing boats in Gloucester Harbor, uh, hundreds actually, and and they were all the big eastern wood wooden draggers, yep. and uh, they used to be tied up six deep outside of Roses, and then we have, uh, I think when I first started, the O'Neill fleet from the Carolinas was up here, orange and white boats, and they were scalloping, and they'd all tie up at our docks, and they'd all be, and then you'd have tuna boats coming up for the summer, and they'd be lashed out. Oh my three or four God! Boats deep. At least, yeah, we got at our dock, there were like seven. Sometimes, you know, during that time when the tuna were right here, they'd be ten deep. It was incredible. Yeah, you know, incredible yeah. amount of business, and, and in those days. Uh, we were where cruise port is, in a little building. We had a counter that was only a few feet long, and there was me and Bobby Muse and Marty. We were the three guys who were working there, and we only had a few items, but we were so busy, and the machine shop was right there. And um, as the business grew, we expanded to take on the dry dock facility, and then 10 years later, we moved to this building, a new building constructed, and uh, it's just been quite a transition. Yeah. But uh, the whole time, we, you know, we adapted, the, the company adapted to the changes and things like that, and yeah. when we started lifting the bigger boats, we got involved with Boston Harbor Cruises, and the 100 foot aluminum commuter boats. Now. Uh, we haul those up and we fix them as fast as we can for them and get them right back into action. So. What year? What year did the? Uh, how, did, had the roses always hauled out boats to do work? No. At one time, um, Tommy Linsky had premise, you know, took it, taken this property and he started to make it into a, you know, a dry dock facility. And they had railroad tracks all over the yard so they could bring big boats in and move them around oh. on the railroad tracks. And one of the first boats, there was an old steam yacht here, the Kangata, and it was hauled out here for years and they were going to always restore it. I think eventually it went to, I'm not sure where it is today, but it's, I think it is restored somewhere at some point. But that was here and it had big rivets in it. And, so Tommy Linsky had the business for a few years and things didn't work out and uh, Roses ended up buying the property. Uh, we took out the railroad, uh, railways cars. They left it so we can lift two boats, two, two 90 odd foot boats at a time. And then the rest of the yard is opened up and they put in a travel all lift so we can haul 40, 50 foot boats and put them in the yard. The guys can work on them themselves and we'll help them get the propellers off. And, so it's just a lot of stuff going on here, and all those people are in, are in this new store buying things. And meanwhile, downstairs is a full-service machine shop, which the machine is propeller shafting, and uh, they also uh, now, because the, the boat building is a little slower, we've been doing a lot of uh, other work in the medical fields, and we could be machining almost anything downstairs in yeah. the machine shop. Yeah. Now, would you say how much of a decline in fishing industry related stuff would you say in the past 10 years? Has it, has it been? It's been an awful decline. Yes, yeah. it certainly has. And it's affected the whole city of Gloucester. Uh, you know, when you talk about a boat going out of business, you're talking about the crews too that have families. So it's putting a lot of people out of business. And it's sad to see that happen. And I see a bumping of guys around town now. They're saying, well, I'm working at Varian now or doing something different. They've had to reinvent themselves from being fishing boat captains to yeah. doing something else. So it's kind of sad in a way because you know the hats would be if you rather on the water. Right. You know? So, uh, but it's... Uh, but there's, do you, you, it's, it, there's a definite. It's oh. not, there's not a question. Oh, there's I mean, no question about it whatsoever. And that's, and that's probably part of the reason why 
they do, they do medical supply device oh, sure, uh, sure. work and stuff yeah, like right. that. It's, you know, the, the ability of this company to adapt to these different things is really a great thing for the community because everybody that's worked here is working for a long time. You know, the guys in the dry dock are, have worked around boats for years and yeah. the machinists down here, we've got a couple of new younger guys now starting out that are great and it's just a, you know, Gloucester kids. So we like seeing that happen. When you retire though, the knowledge base that I mean, Marty's still here. Oh sure. But uh, but the knowledge base that goes with you, like parts and knowing where to source things for captains, that's very difficult to replace. It, it, yeah, sure. I was saying I wish there was some way I could put a computer chip in my brain and run it all off for somebody, so uh, they could just pick it up. Yeah. And uh, we hired a new guy to take my place. Ed, Ed Quirk is a great guy, mm -hmm. and uh, he reminds me of me when I started. He's going to have a lot of stuff to learn, yeah. but it, it'll come easy. Yeah. And I told him I, I learn something new every day. Right. So, and I do. It, it's, it's I'm not just saying that. It's always something new going on and. What has been your favorite part of being here at Roses? Oh, the people. It's the people. The guys, the working fishermen, uh, some of the greatest guys I've ever met in my life. I'm just honored to, to have met them and worked with them. They're always, I don't know, it's just, just a lot of fun helping people out, finding things for people yeah. that they can't find anywhere else. And, you know, if I say, uh, well, have you tried this place or that place? Oh, we've tried, you know, they've tried six other places. They come here last. Yeah. But we're supposed to find it, so right. we do. Yeah, and, right. And, and, and if we can't find it, we try to. I always try to tell somebody, "Well, try this place to try that place, some place maybe they haven't thought of." Because the the idea is that if people could come in here and, and they know they're going to get yeah, the they're going to get an answer. Yeah, it may not be the answer they want, but, but at least it will be an honest answer. Right. As far as did we really try to find okay. it? Yes, we did. What are some of the names of the biggest characters that you've dealt with over the over the years? Oh boy, <laughs> some of the grandest personalities that wow. that you, when they walk, you know, they come in here. Well, there was Billy Priestley back on the Eider and Joseph. He was a character. He was. He was uh, I remember he told me on the Eider and Joseph they had like 14 pumps on the boat. It was a lot of pumps because they'd load them up. The Eider and Joseph she was coming with pogies. And she'd be right down to her guy, but I mean, she was right in the water. Was, the fish were keeping her afloat, right. and uh, he had all these pumps. And he, he remember he, one day he told me that he, uh, he was here, and they called from the Lost Marine Railways, and he called the Eider and Joseph out, and they said there was so much water in it. He had to go and pump it out. He was saying, he goes, oh, the pump's up. The boat's on dry dock, and I still have to go and pump it out. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, he was a character. Bill was, and, uh, geez, well, so many guys over the years, it's almost uh, incredible. I don't even know if I can start with a start on that one. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, a lot of great, colorful characters. Like Michael Lissy, he's a character. He comes in here from up the line, and... Uh, Geez, I, I don't know. Almost any guy could be a character. That's, in, yeah, it's about right. Day. That's just part of the industry. Yeah, uh, yeah. And there's uh, a lot of give and take. There's a lot of harassment and stuff <laughs> like that. So, but most of them good people, you know. Absolutely. And I mean, there's a lot of people from the construction industries that come in here for hydraulic hoses and nuts and bolts and whatever. And, and there's that's another whole great bunch of guys. Yeah, I get. To, I mean, for us at Don Captain Joe's, uh, like I don't know how many times you know the pumps fail, the lobster pumps. You know that we pump the water out of the ocean to run the tanks, and you know we have come to depend on this place as much as any other place. Oh, sure. You know, and and get back up and running within a day. I yeah. Mean, all we, the the amount of parts that are particular to our industry that are housed in this building and they got but the and if they're not the people like you that know like because I would have no idea you know that know exactly what you need and the right fittings and everything and just call up and, and it's within a you know oftentimes the same day yeah. you're up and running which which is invaluable it is you know it's funny I've talked to so many people for 30 odd years on the phone and never met a lot of them and <laughs> Uh, one day, uh, a couple of weeks ago, a guy walked in the door, and he comes over, and he goes, you're Pete. I go, yep. He goes, you know who I am? And I, I, I recognize the voice. Guy Jimmy Rolls that I bought pipe from for years, wow. and uh, he was going out whale watching. He wanted to stop in and actually see what I look like. That's so uh, it was pretty Jesus. interesting, you know. What are you gonna miss most about you know the, the oh, people? The, pe the people was number one. Yeah, missing yeah. the people and uh, 
uh, hopefully I'll see a lot of people around the coffee shops and I'm, you know people say well you go to Florida no way <laughs> I've been fortunate to, I live in Rockport I'm fortunate to be here yeah and my granddaughters are all around here I have five granddaughters wow. when I was a, a young man I used to say uh, when I got to this age, this young age uh, I wanted to be surrounded by young women so now I got my wish <laughs> there you go that's right so it's a wonderful thing Fantastic. so I'm staying around so I'm hoping to see a lot of these characters and uh, you know run around the wasp once in a while I, I told a couple of guys I like to go out watch for them, for them nice flat day I'll go watch them for you but uh you know, so I'm looking forward to, you know, still seeing people. Well, Pete, thank you for everything you've done, I mean, personally, but, I, you know, I, I'm sure I speak for the entire waterfront community at, at one point or another. Everybody's dealt with you, or you know. Oh, it's true. Or, I mean, you know, <laughs> it's absolutely. That's this. When I say these things, there's no exaggeration at all. In you know, and um, and uh, you know, gosh, there's a whole. There's going to be a void there. That I mean, I know there's some great people that, that oh, are still sure. here, but that that knowledge base that you have after all these years, that'll uh, be very difficult to replace. Yes, yeah, so, but there's new guys who learn just like I did and I hope they'll continue on tradition and I'm sure Roses will stay always stay busy so hopefully there'll be somebody here and if worst comes to worst I can come out of retirement <laughs> for a day and help out if I need to. Pete, thank you so much. Oh, thank you, Jeff.